Now, vasomotor effects. Anybody familiar with the term vasomotor? You ever, ever you cover that in any of your classes, the vasomotor system? This is a real important system uh, in the Casey approach to manual therapy particularly. This is, this is almost the reason he, he recommended osteopathy so often, what you can do with the vasomotor system. With the vasomotor system or a vasomotor effect, uh, you're talking about the, the blood flow and how the blood flow is regulated in very specific areas of the body rather than the general sense, the deep and superficial is very kind of general in a way. So and here he's talking about the vasomotor centers being dilated. Dilated. They've increased the, the somehow there's a, a relaxation and an increase in volume, a dilation, um, and a plethora or a plethora condition of the veins. So again, there's too much of something, a plethora, uh, too much circulation, a vasomotor effect. So what are we talking about here? Well, your arteries in particular have smooth muscle around the, uh, around the wall of the artery, right? It's, it's smooth muscle, it's not striated. Now your striated muscle is more of your, is the muscle you can control consciously. You understand that concept. Striated muscle, that's the cerebral spinal. That's, you can control the movements of your arms and all that because those are striated muscles. And I can say, I can make it do this or make it do that. You get the smooth muscle tissue, that's more of the, the sympathetic, autonomic. And you usually don't have as much control over that. So try, try controlling the speed at which food digests or your intestinal tract or a lot of these things which the autonomic, they just do automatically. This autonomic part of your system, you don't have control. So the blood vessels, for the most part, you don't have a lot of conscious control over that. The system is handling that on its own. It knows where the blood needs to go at any given time for any particular, you know, when you eat the food, it knows, send more blood to the digestive tract. It can, can control these things, okay? So you see the normal in the middle there, a normal, let's call it a normal blood vessel. You see that on the left side, it's dilated, it's larger. That previous reading, when the vasomotor centers were dilated, that's what we're talking about. When, when they're dilated, they, they, this, the muscle tissue around the blood vessel relaxes, sort of dilates and becomes larger. Relaxation, dilation, the vasomotor relaxation. So you get more blood flow when it's relaxed and dilated, right? On the right side, this, when the, and by the way, this is regulated by the sympathetic nerve impulse. There's nerve fibers coming to those muscles, and if it sends the impulse from the sympathetic nerve, if it gets that impulse, what's it do to a muscle? What happens when a muscle gets a nerve impulse? There's one thing it can do. <laughs> it, it contracts. Right, yeah. The impulse comes to the muscle, it contracts. If the impulse doesn't come, it relaxes and dilates. The impulse comes, it contracts, okay? That's the, the signal process by which the nervous system regulates a lot of muscles. I mean, almost all your muscles of the body work like this. So on the right side, you see the, the, blood, the blood vessel smaller. It's constricted. And what has happened there is that the sympathetic nerve has sent the impulse to say, contract, dilate, contract. Okay, can you see how this kind of system, if you could, could, if you could regulate that sympathetic nerve, could you see how you could control the blood flow to any part of the body? We'll see a quote here in a little bit where Edgar Casey defines osteopathy this way. He says, an osteopath can do three things. You can make a correction if something's out of place, but you can increase or decrease the blood flow to any part of the body. That's, that's the beauty of osteopathy. It's vasomotor regulation. And when you go back and look at the old osteopathic text, you'll find them talking about vasomotor, vasomotor, vasomotor. Where's the vasomotor centers? How do you regulate the vasomotors? There's two things you can do to a nerve center, to a, vaso, to a vasomotor nerve center. One of these osteopathic nerve centers they talked about. You can increase the nerve impulse by a, an on and off pressure, like a telegrapher's pump, 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 you know, or, or something more of a stimulating. See, that tells, that tells the nervous system, increase the nerve impulse, right? Or hold a steady pressure, a steady pressure for two, three minutes or more, and that relaxes the sympathetic. So the sympathetic says, oh, I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to play, uh, be cool here, okay? Not as much impulse, not as much impulse, more circulation, dilation, more circulation. Stimulation, they call it stimulation, 
an inhibition. We're going to inhibit a nerve center. Inhibition will tend to produce more of this. And K Edgar Casey actually described some techniques. He said, go to the osteopath and have him do this to set up drainages in the system. And I'll show you. I think I have a slide here where we can look at examples of that. So these are the sort of things that they could do, not popping and cracking, but just finding a nerve center and either stimulating or inhibiting, like a gas pedal and a brake. If you know how to do these with the centers, he said you could control the blood flow to any part of the body. Isn't that interesting? That's circulation, by the way. See, we're, we're, this is when you get to this deeper level of circulation. We're talking about superficial, deep, these vasomotor effects. You see how interesting it can become as to what's going on in the body and how you can influence it by manipulation, physiotherapies.